Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Pastor. Let's see, this is Thursday morning, the 18th of July, 2024, and I have a nice hot cup of coffee right here. I have my copy of the Word of God open to James chapter 3, the book of James in chapter 3. Please join me there as we will be reading that in just a few moments. Today's point to ponder comes to us by way of D.L. Moody. And I could not agree with him more. He stated this. A man ought to live so that everybody knows he is a Christian. And most of all, his family ought to know. I don't know how you disagree with that statement. A man ought to live so that everybody knows he is a Christian. And most of all, his family ought to know. And that, again, comes to us by way of D.L. Moody. So, again, I trust you're going to have a wonderful day. We had a wonderful time at prayer meeting last night. And what doesn't happen very often in my local church is that I can sit back and enjoy. And I want to say thank you to John for a prayer meeting last night and for making my night afterwards a little miserable as I was trying to crunch numbers based upon his study. and. I love it. I really love it when somebody challenges my thinking as he did last night. And so, again, thank you very much. Um, I found that very rewarding and very enjoyable. And, again, um, his study pushed me to, again, get into the Word a little bit deeper. And is not that the purpose of every Bible study? So, anyway. We, it is nine o'clock, and we're going to go ahead, bow our heads, bow our hearts before our Heavenly Father, and commit this day to Him and for you and I to report for duty. Let's pray together. Good morning, Father, and thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for your servants, those who delve into the Word, who study the Word and take the time to share what they have found so that all of us can grow deeper into our faith. Father, we thank you that your word is trustworthy, that your word is true, that your word can be, that we can base our lives upon its sayings, what it tells us about you, about life, about people, about. And Lord, I just want to say thank you for all, for all that you have done. Lord, as we come before your throne this morning, again, it's going to be an opportunity for us to again open up your word. And we pray that your spirit would teach us, guide us, direct us, help us to understand, to apply your word to our individual lives. And Lord, all of us have challenges. All of us have limitations. All of us have aches and pains of one sort or another. And so, Father, we come into your presence. And we pray that not only through our circumstances, but even because of our circumstances, use us in the lives of others. Help us to be a blessing to each one that is around us. Father, perhaps today we would have the opportunity to share the blessed gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we might have the opportunity to introduce another to him. Father, you've already mentioned limitations and aches and pains, and Father, you know our frame. But Lord, as we come into your presence, we do it again ask for your blessing upon your people. And the more we think, the more we contemplate your blessings, it has very little to do with finances, it has very little to do with what we often think about in terms of the way we would like to be blessed and the things that we all would like to have. Father has everything to do with your promises, 
has everything to do with your presence, has everything to do with your provision for us. And so, Father, we pray that today we would see your blessed hand at work in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this time of opening up your word, reading it together, learning it together. And Father, again, use it to spark a deeper interest that would turn us to your word and digging deeper. We thank you. We praise you for this. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The book of James, chapter 3. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which, though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things of the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father. And therewith curse we man, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be so to be. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine tree or a vine figs, so that no fountain both yield salt water and fresh? Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And may God add his blessing from the reading of his word. A couple of things. Number one, we know how dangerous the tongue can be. We can either bring encouragement to one's life or we can sometimes even destroy one's life just with the fruit of the tongues. I have been the victim of tales and rumors. I have seen others be the victim of tales and rumors. There is no telling the damage that the tongue can do. The second thing is a lot of times we talk about street smarts. We talk about the learning that we pick up through life. In many cases, that learning is that learning, that wisdom that James refers to that is earthly, sensual, and devilish. We need to be versed in the wisdom 
of the word. Beloved, it's going to be a great day. I am really looking forward to today, and I trust you are as well. And as we go forth into this day, let me just change up the order a little bit and just remind you that, number one, you are indeed loved. You are loved by the Almighty God. And it's this Almighty God that loves you so much that we call you to be faithful to. It's not only God that loves you, we love you as well. It is our desire that God's richest blessings be upon your life, and you will never, ever, ever allow yourself to become someone else's excuse for turning away from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Beloved, until tomorrow, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.